You remember this guy? His name is Kenneth Espinoza. Well, we did a video on him. Not too long ago, his son got pulled over by Los Animas County deputies and he pulled over behind him. And what did Kenneth get for his trouble? Those two deputies tased and tortured him on the roadside and held him at gunpoint and jeopardized his life. Well, there's an update on that now. Kenneth is now $1.5 million richer, but none of that money came out of the deputies' pockets. And the two deputies? No, they weren't jailed like they should have been. They only lost their jobs. Check out this report right here. A Southern Colorado, Colorado man is getting more than $1 million as part of a use of force lawsuit. The case is against two Los Animas County Sheriff's deputies who tased the man during an arrest. Cardio 13's Tyler Cunnington joins us live in studio as he follows this developing news and details of the settlement. Tyler. Yeah, Heather, before we get to the story, a warning, some of this body camera footage might be tough to watch. That video shows Kenneth Espinoza being tased numerous times, both in his body and his face, before being further assaulted by Los Animas County Sheriff's deputies. Now, in the time since, those deputies have been fired, and Espinoza... I'm just going to freeze on these deputies right here. Let it be known to all Americans as we work our way through this story that these deputies would have done the exact same to you. And while they may have been fired, there's a good chance that they could go a couple counties over and be rehired and do the exact same thing. These people will not learn their lesson. Why? Because they're not jailed. True justice never visits them. Has now been paid $1.5 million in settlement money. No. This is body camera footage of the arrest of Kenneth Espinoza by two Los Animas County Sheriff's deputies, Lieutenant Henry Trujillo and Deputy Michael Noel. It shows the excessive force used in the November 2022 arrest. Espinoza. Now you notice Espinoza is Hispanic. One of the deputies is Hispanic and the other deputy is black. We ain't got no racism going on here. We got despotism. We've got tyranny. We've got authoritarianism, but no racism. The problem in America, while there may be some racism, for the most part, it's authoritarianism. It's people who think that they have a higher claim over your life and property than you to the point where they will abuse you and do something to you that they would never want done to them. Now has an extra $1.5 million in his bank account, thanks to a settlement with the sheriff's office and the county commissioners following a formal investigation. It's a lot of money, so I, I hope it's enough. Um, not necessarily from the aspect of making my client whole, but enough to make a change. Kevin Meir, the attorney for Espinoza, says the body cam footage clearly showed the excessive force and the confusion caused between the two deputies. They ordered Espinoza to leave the scene after he stopped his truck behind his son who had been pulled over by the deputies in Trinidad. You need to go. No, I hey. don't. I'm waiting on my son. He's my ride back to Wilson. Leave. From there, Espinoza begins to pull away, and that's when things escalate. That's the car. Stay, 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 stay. Hey, stop the f***ing, stop the f***ing out the and, and let's just ask the question here. What is the harm of this guy sitting behind his son as he gets pulled over by these deputies? minding his own business, being peaceful, a good distance away. See, this whole thing happen, and the reason they want you to leave is for officer safety. How many people have been killed? How many people have been tased? How many people have been jailed because of officer safety? If they're that scared, maybe they've chosen the wrong profession. Nobody ever wants to talk about the fact that these cops who have uniforms, badges, guns, Kevlar vests, a bunch of training, and all the tools that it takes to put down any kind of attacker, why are they so scared? Why are they so intimidated by the public? Why do they feel like they need to force their will on somebody to the point where they will literally put somebody's life on the line or take a life to make them feel less scared? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. That is insanity. How can any commanding officer, how can any city commissioner look at a video like this and say, yep, that guy right there needs to be roaming free among us in society. 
How many sane people can look at this and rightly determine, yeah, this guy right here, he needs to be behind bars. But somehow, all that ends up happening is there's a paid administrative leave. They get a paid vacation until the internal affairs does their investigation. And then somehow all they get is fired. All that happens to them is they lose their jobs. What would happen to you and I if we did the exact same thing to our fellow human beings or God forbid, do it to a cop. You would not see the light of day for the rest of your life. Just sort of snap judgment that they made that snap change in decision based on nothing. That's what really jumped out at me on this case. Afterwards, body cam footage shows Espinoza being tased upwards of 35 times total, as well as being pushed into a deputy vehicle and pulled from a vehicle to the ground. Guys, this is roadside torture is exactly what it is. It's unacceptable and it's unjust for anything other than jail time to happen to these cops. While handcuffed. Now, Espinoza's attorney says those two deputies had been involved in another lawsuit that had just settled 12 days prior to that <laughs> incident in Trinidad. They have now both. They were a part of another large settlement in the same area. Those same two deputies. So we've got a historical precedent and we've got a pattern of these two deputies abusing people and costing the taxpayers money. And you're going to keep those people on. Or you're gonna you're gonna fire them and give them an opportunity, probably give them some kind of commendation in the background so that they can be hired at another police department and do the exact same thing and engage in the exact same behavior. This is lunacy. And both fired from the agency as of September of 2023. And then we got this story coming out of Indian River County, Florida. It says Indian River County Sheriff's Deputy charged with possession of CP and then fired one day after being sworn in. Check this out. Well, good evening, folks. Thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate you coming out this late in the evening, but uh, when we have news like this, we like to share it and get this information out as soon as possible. Uh, tonight, unfortunately, we're here to tell you about the arrest of one of our own. We uh, unfortunately had the task of arresting a deputy tonight. You know, when you think about the start of a career, somebody who's just coming into law enforcement, uh, it's oftentimes a happy day, and yesterday was one of those days. I swore in five new law enforcement deputies, three new corrections deputies, uh, but that's not the end of the story. At the beginning of the day, one of those new deputies, a deputy by the name of Kai Cromer, uh, walked onto campus of one of our high schools here in town, and a brave young female came forward and alerted our staff that this deputy who had been contacting her via Snapchat, asking her to send photographs, asking her to send naked pictures, topless pictures, and uh, that she felt very uncomfortable just even seeing him on campus. That began our investigation, and I can tell you before the end of the day, before uh, the sun set, our team had a search warrant for his cell phone. He was sworn in just after lunchtime, and before the end of his first workday, before the end of that day, as a sworn in deputy, we were taking his cell phone from him for a search warrant. Our team that's here, Detective Scrivener's behind me, we've got some of our other folks here. They worked all night accessing that phone, looking. Makes you wonder how many other fellow officers are engaged in that exact same activity. Makes you wonder if the police chief right here and the guy standing back there in the suit is engaged in the exact same activity. Looking at what was coming through, the information that was coming through there, um, I can tell you that today, as a result of that early analysis, and we're talking about over 100 gigs of data, we have booked him into our jail on one count of possession of child pornography. 100 gigs of data from his cell phone? Kai Cromer is no longer an employee of the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. This Tonight, uh, our captain uh, terminated him while he was in our cell over there, let him know that he is no longer a deputy with the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. And tonight, I'm here to make a plea to the public. Um, he used his name as his Snapchat handle, Kai Cromer. We know of four victims at this moment, four people that he was contacting. Uh, we know that he requested video, photographs, 
Um, and these folks that have come forward are very concerned for their safety. Um, he's in on $15,000 bond. We want the public and the people out there to know that if you've seen this guy on Snapchat, if he's contacted you, um, we need to talk to you. There are victims. There are other victims that we know about already. He's a danger to society. He's a danger to our community, but we just set the bail for 15,000, which means he only has to put up 1,500 and he should be free sometime tonight. Ready? We're but we're here to protect and serve. Trying to get in contact with some of them, um, but there are others that we have yet identified. And um, we're confident that there will be additional charges. Um, usually we don't issue uh, mug shots on law enforcement cases. But in this case, I actually want to show a picture of him. This is Deputy Kai Cromer, uh, former Deputy Kai Cromer, who's been terminated tonight. With that, I'll take your questions. How old is he? So he's actually 19 years old. He will be 20 next month. He was. Yeah, and that's what we need to do. We need to give a 19 year old a utility belt with a firearm we need to give him a uniform we need to give him a badge and we need to tell him hey we are giving you authority over everybody else buddy and he's like oh man this is exactly what i wanted this is exactly my dream i want to be able to tell people what they need to do i need to be able to push them around and man put me in a situation where i can have some kind of control over a young person and i am in where do i sign captain well right here buddy all right leave your thoughts about this and this story right here in the comment section below if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification icon give it a thumbs up share it with everybody you know and don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website highimpactflix.com if you haven't done so already grab a shirt become a channel member but more importantly know what your rights are and flex your rights if you don't use your rights, you will lose them. I'll see you in the next video.